welcome. Hello, everybody. Welcome again to Audrey Live here Thursday at 1 p.m. And uh, excited to be with you again here today and uh, just really enjoying this time to uh, kind of get together and catch up. Uh, just remember uh, during the show to please comment ask questions, um, if you have any uh, questions of me or of our guest. And today, we're really excited. Today, we have uh, Natasha Wachier uh, on as our guest today. And uh, she has a brand new line, product line called Natasha Creative. And uh, she is from Chamblay, Hopefully, Chambly, Chambly, hopefully I'm saying that right, Quebec. And uh, we're so excited to have her on the show today. Um, so as we're going through the show, uh, enjoy it. And there's always so much to take in. And uh, if you do miss a show, we do uh, post them on our YouTube channel. Sometimes it takes us a day, sometimes it takes us a week, just depending on uh, timing uh, and that sort of thing. So uh, make sure you share, comment, um, and then also you can go and look at it again at our YouTube channel. Um, and I will put that link on it's it's called pin it canada is our youtube channel so but i will put the link on this as well so uh to make sure that everybody uh sees it so uh anyway just a few things i wanted to touch base today first of all um I see a lot of our designers and uh, artists out there are sharing and sharing, which is just amazing. It's nice to see all these free patterns and videos that they're putting on um, on Facebook and uh, YouTube. I saw Debbie Cotton this week actually put up this adorable fish pattern. Um, she just says, thought it would be great to offer free pattern packet to my painting friends and hopes to keep you busy and creative during these times. So uh, that's just, you can go to her website is www.simplycotton.com. And then you can get that, uh, that pattern there, which it, he's just adorable. He's a fish, but he's, he's an adorable fish. So thank you, Debbie, for that. Uh, also, I know Tracy Morrow, uh, she uh, was checking out her uh, YouTube channel and she has got tons of free patterns as well on her website uh, if you go to tracymorrow.net uh there's just tons of freebies i think she calls them i think she calls them freebies or bee freeze or something like that so uh so anyway she's got a lot to share there as well um i noticed this week debbie james Congratulations, Debbie James. She has started some online classes. And I believe the first one was very successful. And uh, she had a full class and she's offering uh, a second class. And I'm sure I hear of a lot of people who are doing the same thing. I was speaking or seeing that Debbie Eckmere and uh, Heather DeYoung and a few others uh, that are offering online classes, which is just you know something that needs to be done right now to keep us all motivated and creative. And, and people are looking for, for something like that so hi everybody i don't want to keep looking at uh the feed here but i do see we have mary ellen and and judy and liz and connie and and verda and corky and natasha and nicole sonia janice francis veronica ruth linda just carolyn just wonderful to have so many people on and and like i said just keep uh Keep asking questions and as much as possible during the show, I'll try to respond. Uh, otherwise, we definitely will respond to you after the show. Um, another thing that everybody is, or a lot of people are doing right now is journaling what is happening. I myself have not started, but all of a sudden I have a feeling that I, I want to do it. You know, um, it's, uh, it's a time in history that we can always look back on um, as physical distancing measures on and carries on as we're going and, you know, the new normal, as everybody says, um, we are all turning to journaling to collect our thoughts. So I did, um, I did make a cover to a journal quite a few years ago. I started this actually in Wales. My husband was uh, living in Wales for two years and working there. And I bought this over there and I did the cover with like a decoupage. And then I started the first page. So that's about as far as I got. So that was our kind of beginning in Wales and everything. I kind of just put a picture of the two of us and, and where he was staying. And um, 
that was back in March 2016. And I really haven't even touched the book since. So I kind of thought to myself, um, I think I'm going to do like a summary page or so. And I started doing some backdrops. So I've been starting to look at a lot of different people and, and how they're doing their backdrops. And, and uh, you know, it can be anything as simple as just putting a couple of pictures and writing your thoughts or just writing your thoughts to being very creative with your, your background. So there's, uh, there's lots to learn for sure. So, and then I think I'm going to start a bit of a COVID journal so that I as well can, can look back. So, and uh this week, I saw Jen Tryon, our wonderful friend Jen Tryon. Uh, she is, uh, had a video on her uh, Facebook, and she, I believe, also did this on um, uh, TV. She, she's on uh, a TV station, and it was her COVID journal. Uh, so it's some really great ideas. So go to uh, Jennifer Tryon. Um, it, uh, she was using, I'll, I'll let you know what she's using. She's using the Jen Hadfield family collection. So that is what she's using in her uh, journal uh, and just really lovely. So go to her Facebook and you can check out that video. And I believe she's going to have it on, um, on her uh, website as well, which is jennifertryon.com. Uh, and you can see lots of free videos on watercolor, wreath making, sewing, scrapbooking. She kind of does it all. She's really an amazing person. So um, so yeah, so that was kind of some of the things that I had seen going on this week. Uh, also, I just want to give you a little tidbit. We have uh, Sandy McTeer coming on the show uh, on June 25th, and she is working on a uh, studio remodel. So um, this is kind of what it looked like when she began. And uh, like she says that it was just a chaotic mess. <laughs> everything everywhere so and she's uh you know she's been working on painting furniture so i'm sure she'll talk about that and her process uh she's been making special uh workstations so that's kind of in progress there and uh and then her finished for uh, she does a lot of videos as well and recording so she's getting things uh ready there to do a lot more online um so yeah, so that'll be exciting to see. She's going to do the big reveal on June 25th on the show here. So you'll definitely want to watch that. And she also does a lot of journaling. So uh, we'll definitely uh, see some more of, um, and we'll, we'll keep the journaling talk kind of going. So if you have any ideas or if you're journaling and you have something you'd like to share, we would love to hear it. And I can share it uh, with everybody else on, on, the, on the, the show here. So um with much, with no ado or whatever, I'm really, really excited today for our guest. Uh, our guest is Natasha Wachie. And uh, she, I have known her. She's a, a positive and dynamic woman. And I've known her for many, many years. Uh, our paths have crossed in many different directions of our, our business lives. Um, Natasha has been in the design business for 30 years. During this time, she's produced several magazines especially in the decorative art, craft, and DIY uh, sectors, and transforming and painting furniture. Over time, she'd become a reference in the field, uh, which enabled her to go into this art in Quebec, Canada, and Europe. She's designed various magazines. Then she had a chance to write several columns and in some of the most popular decor magazine, was part of a team of collaborators for a television show called Simply Comme Bonjour. I think I said that right. I really have to work my French. I apologize, Natasha. And she's produced videos and collaborations with Desayers, which is a large retail arts and crafts show, a store. She also organized the largest show of arts and crafts in Quebec, which I had uh, the pleasure of going to for many years, bringing together hundreds of exhibitors from all over uh, North America. After these unique and enriching experiences, Natasha opened her own publishing house, Lay's Edition Insta Art where she created the magazine Natasha Creative, as well as many books. And just so exciting to have her on with us today. And uh, yeah, welcome, Natasha. Oh, she's getting herself all set. She's connecting. Hello, Natasha. <laughs> we'll just let her get set up there a minute and uh, see whether she's ready to go. 
Hello. She's connecting her audio. I should have brought her on, I guess, a couple minutes sooner. There. Oh, there we are. Hello. <laughs> See, I'm so are. sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Yeah. Let me just um, know. You, I'm too down. Let me just one second. I thought I was okay, but oh, there it is. <laughs> you look beautiful, my darling. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I didn't uh, know where where I would have been. Oh, yeah, here I am. <laughs> How are you? Good, good. How are you? Thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, uh, well, I'm really happy to do this. <laughs> it's, it's a pleasure to have you. So uh, just maybe you can just tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, a little bit of background about yourself. Are and, you sure uh, it's going to take two hours? <laughs> Oh, I'm sure they won't mind watching for two hours. Okay. They'll come back and forth. <laughs> I'm just seeing that I'm, you're just seeing my head. Let me just arrange this. Okay. Yeah, and that, then you're going to be better back. this way. Yeah. And I can hear. I can hear you better now too. Okay, great then. Good. Yay! Yay! <laughs> okay. Well, I'm a, first of all, I'm very creative. For. I don't even know when I started to be creative, but I think it's in the genes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for people that doesn't know, I, I, I never talk about this, uh, not often, because it's not something that I tell everybody, but still, I know that the people that are following you are not the same as my people that are following me. So yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I, my mother is very popular. She's, <laughs> she's a singer. So she's, it's Jeanette Renault. Oh, and lovely. Yeah. So I've been all my life, uh, traveling a lot, <laughs> seeing a lot of uh, people and, uh, it gave me the opportunity to be very creative, very young. So I danced a lot. I've been in the ice capades when I was young. Wow. I in England. I lived in Los Angeles. I lived, uh, I bet, everywhere. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah. And that's where I learned my English. That's what I was telling you. Yes. I was going to say, you mentioned the other day that almost English is almost your first tongue in a way because well, when you were young. Thing, yeah. That's the funny thing is that when I was living in Los Angeles, I was talking only English all the time because all of my friends were only talking English. And even with my brother, I was talking only English with him. So when I was coming home after school, even if we were speaking French in the house, I was still speaking for, in English. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> when I came back uh, here, well, I started school in French. So, and I didn't have any friends that were speaking English. So I, it's not that I lost it because I didn't lose it. It's just that I don't practice enough. So that's the only thing. But if I would be in an environment that there would be a lot of English and I would be really fluid and, you know, really fast. Yep. But I, I think it's, I'm going Your to English is amazing. You are very fluent in English. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I think, think you, you uh, underestimate yourself, Natasha. I know, I know. <laughs> Maybe because in French, like I was saying the other day, I'm very fluid in French. And when I, you know, explain my techniques it's so easy for me to explain it when i say it in english it's like oh i have to think like oh this is not this word or this word but still yeah, so, yeah. well i know when i watch some of your uh, your lives on facebook i like to see what you're doing um but yeah you talk like doo, 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 doo. <laughs> yeah i'm pretty sometimes i have to you know tell them myself whoa whoa not everybody listens as fast as i speak so <laughs> I have to calm down. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think it just shows your excitement for what you're doing. Exactly. That's yeah. what I think yeah. too. <laughs> so funny thing, you sent me a couple of uh, uh, questions and one really uh, shook, you know, me because uh, when I was young, I was sure that I would be a, a dance teacher. Ah. So this was so, oh yeah, I was so sure that I would do this. Yeah. yeah. Even today, I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I, I really didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. So I danced a lot. I was doing ballet for about, I mean, about 10 years. And wow. then I started uh, dancing jazz and all these kinds of dances. 
And the funny thing is my daughter danced so much and she teaches dance now. Oh. And I don't. <laughs> well, that's really neat though, that that's she's really taken funny. that. Yeah. So she had the love of dance that you had and well, yeah. the music from your mom and yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I, but I'm a good dancer. <laughs> good. <laughs> I miss dancing because I don't, I don't dance anymore. So yeah, yeah, yeah. but I would have loved doing dance. Well, well, dance and drawing or creating is a form of creation. Exactly. So yeah. It's an art form just in a different way. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. So how did you kind of get started in the industry and the creative business then? When did that? Well, I studied design. So I'm a designer for since uh, in the 80s, after uh, 90s and start of 90s, I started to be a designer. I studied design. And funny thing, when I, I got out of school, there was no opening the only thing that you could do when you were going out of school, uh, out of school is, you know, doing paint in the uh, Rona or like in, you know, construction centers and stuff like that. And I didn't yeah. want to do some paints. <laughs> so <laughs> I opened a store in oh. Chambly, in my city, uh, an arts and crafts store. And uh, the years that I started, um, the uh, decorative painting uh, industry was starting too. Really, with Jackie Nadeau and Claudine Poirier Gingras, there was a lot of different artists here in Quebec that was starting to be uh, popular. Okay. And uh, I took a lot of classes when I had my store. And then, funny thing, the store was really hard for me because when you're a creative person, you're not good having a store. <laughs> you have to create all the time. So I, I, st I stopped the store, I closed it. And then I started teaching. So yeah. I teached uh, decorative painting for about, my God, since 1994, 95, I think, I, I started to do like decorative painting classes and everything. So I gave class uh, a, a, about two or three places. Oh, okay, yeah. And I took a lot of classes too. And I started going to Castwood and different, uh, uh ex, you know shows like this i yeah, even yeah. went to tampa uh and other places in the united states where they had like big shows with the arts and craft well, well more on the decorative painting uh, yeah. side yeah and so I, I i was like more and more and more all the time because i really loved it and i was i it, it made me so creative and the thing that was really funny for about two years i was giving classes and i i was saying to all my my uh, students one day i'm gonna do a magazine in french because all the information that we had was all in english we oh, didn't yes. have anything in french no yeah. patterns in french no magazine in french no books no nothing yeah so yeah. and and all the people that were talking french in my area they were always saying well i can't read english or i can't Try, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the, the colors, but I can't see what's written. And so I said, well, one day I'm going to do that. And once I met somebody, really funny thing happened. Uh, my mother was supposed to do an article in a magazine uh, for TVA Publication. That's a mag, they have a lot of magazines in Quebec. And like a, a bit like uh, the, um, I mean, what's the home and garden like, oh, like the yeah. magazine? Yeah. yeah, they have like different magazines like this one. And um, that girl was uh, like uh, very important for that magazine. And she met my mother and my mother said to her, you should see all what my, my daughter does. She does so much things. So one day she brought that girl at my house to see all what I was doing, like all the paintings and like the <laughs> arts and craft and that I was doing sewing stuff and like everything. So, and she came in the house and my mother was like, she did this, she did this, she did this, she did this. So she said, what did she do, didn't do here? <laughs> so uh, uh, a couple of days after, <laughs> yeah, that's really funny. Like the, the, old, the old saying was, if it doesn't move, paint it, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so uh, that girl called me a couple of days after and she said, well, 
we're interested in giving you an article in a magazine. So I said, really? I said, that's really fun. I didn't even know how to write it. So I started to write articles every week in one magazine. And I've since then I was like getting better and better. And then, you know, starting to be in the business of writing articles. And, and one day they proposed to me, do you want to do a magazine? So I said, yeah, sure. Why not? So I did two magazines, one for Christmas and another one for the summer projects, but it was an arts and crafts magazine. Yeah. So yeah. that's how it started. Wow. And I, I mean, like four years after I proposed them to do Coup de Pain. So the, the magazine, uh, the decorative art magazine, that was a French one. Yeah. Yeah. And they said, no, we don't want to do this. So I said, okay, well, bye-bye. <laughs> so I left them. I'm thinking. I was I just looking the, through my shelf the other day and look what I found. Exactly. So that was our magazine. <laughs> we even had it in French, in, uh, not in French, but in English. In English, yeah, I remember that. We this is the French in, version, but yeah, that's a French I version. have quite a few of them on my shelf. So yeah, so that's yeah. Coup de Pain. So, so the editors, I've met them and I proposed them Coup de Pain. So that was my idea. My, my all was here in my head. I really wanted to do this. And so they said, yeah, sure, we're interested. So we started Coup de Pain So. Yeah. And since uh, the first number, they're still there. I'm not working for them anymore, but the magazine is still, still working. Going. They, wow. yeah, they have editions every, I think every two or three months, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. And but then you've been involved a in a couple, couple other publications too, right? Yes, we did like furniture, like recycling yeah. furniture. We did like... Um, I think we did like birdhouses. We did uh, different like off série. We call that off série. It's like different yeah. numbers. That's not coup de pinceau. And I did this for seven years. Wow. And what I did is I took artists from U U.S., from Canada, from Quebec, and I presented them in that magazine. And but. But that, at that time, I wasn't taking my place. I was working for them. And I was um, like, how can I say this? I was presenting all these artists to grow the business. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't care if I wasn't in there. I just wanted them to be known. And I wanted this art to be all over the place because I, I was really in love with this business. So I wanted to make it grow, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is what I did. And after a while, we started the show uh, Le Salon des Arts uh, with Coup de Pinceau. And so I did that for six years, I think. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then I stopped because I was really tired. I did too much. <laughs> yeah. And it is stressful. <laughs> it is. And a couple of years ago, I started my magazine, the Natasha Creative. And then I stopped because the business of magazines is very, very hard because they take off a lot of uh, space in the stores. So we don't have a lot of space to put our magazines and yeah. people with the internet, with Pinterest and Instagram and all these uh, platforms, you can't, this, I mean, the magazines don't sell anymore. So yeah. that's yeah. why I stopped. Everybody looks online. Exactly. So yeah. I, I had to take it like a chance and say, okay, well, I'm going to stop doing the magazines. And I will put all my energy to be like an influencer uh, on my different platforms and, you know, really work hard to create this avenue because the other one wasn't working. So, yeah. so yeah. that's about what I did. Awesome. I, I, of, I, I left a couple of places that I don't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that's incredible. So show us your new product, this new product line you've been working on. And yeah. so when did you release it? It's just been newly released. So this yes. is really the first time in English that you've uh, released the product. Yes, because I already have like a stencil uh, collection. Yeah. Uh, and I have like like different things like that, like uh, napr aprons and stuff. But these products, I was thinking about those for about almost two years. And I, I had an idea in my head, but I really wanted to create it. So I met Demco, Demco en couleur. That's a company from, from here, Quebec. Yeah. They do a lot of products and it goes all over the place. It's on uh, the stores in different stores in Canada. They, they distribute everywhere. So, and uh, we created 
a package of four mediums uh, that you could do a lot of things with it. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, there's there's four mediums. There's the one, this one, let me see, show you the biggest four. <laughs> It's even I'm better. Gonna see, I'm going to see if I can just get you on the screen in big. Okay. There, and then that way uh, I'm going to mute myself for a little bit so that I won't be shown. So it'll just be you for a little bit so you can show okay. everybody. So you have um, two, two uh, forms of uh, co um, containers. You have the eight ounces and you have one liter. And why one liter is because... <laughs> You're gonna love this product so much that you won't need this for a container. It's, you're gonna love this container because you're gonna use a lot. So that's why I wanted one liter. So there's the product that's the one that's gonna be, I think, the most popular because it's the one that you use the most is the decoupage medium. This one is really something because it's not like Mod Podge, it's not like uh, like matte medium. It's very different. So I will tell you in a couple of minutes what I can do with this, you'll see. And I did um, a matte varnish and the matte varnish is uh, used for two things. You could do a uh, sealer with it uh, and uh, before painting on your, on your surfaces and you could uh, use it like a varnish because it's a matte varnish. So this is another, th another product. And the other thing I did is I created a glaze because I do a lot of full finishes in my uh, techniques and in my art. And the thing that's really fun with this, you could do stain, full finishes and transparency. There's a lot of things. I know people that use glaze know what you could do with this, but I do a lot of <laughs> videos. So uh, I will show a lot what to do with this and to, uh, be able to finish all your pieces. There's a top coat varnish that's um, glossy. So that's the one that, you, but if you don't like glossy finish, you can take the matte one. So you have the two uh, possibilities. So the thing that's really great with that product is that just to show you, because it's really, really extraordinary for me, <laughs> I think it's that for the art business, the, uh, Beaux Arts, we say in French, uh, you could glue uh, lots of paper or even tissue paper on canvas, but very big canvases. So, like if you can see just this big. And the thing that's really, really, I mean, ex extraordinary, it's it doesn't do any wrinkle. Wow. So it's it's flat. Yeah. And after you put the uh, tissue paper or whatever you could paint over after you put the matte varnish. So you could do aquarelle, it's watercolor. You could put uh, encre de chine. Uh, you could put uh, acrylic, uh, I mean, oils, whatever you want. So that's the fantastic thing about it. And this is all uh, done with an iron. So <laughs> that's the, the great thing about it is that normally when you put paper on a surface, you have to take your brush and then you glue, you put the glue, you put your paper and then you put glue over it and then it, it wrinkles and it's not, it's not, the surface is not beautiful, you know? So this glues tissue, textile, paper, uh, watercolor paper. I mean, it's like whatever you wanna put, if you could put it, so that's really nice. And you could put it on canvas, on wood, on metal. Uh, I mean, it's on <laughs> even cardboard. So that's uh, one thing that's really nice too. And so, then you you painted that. Um, uh, you yes, painted this, on there. This one, yes. That the Paris. The, uh, Tour, the Tour Eiffel of Paris. Ah, uh, yes. that's so, oh, that just looks awesome. So it's just very easy and smooth to paint on as well. Yeah, and just to show you what, you know, burlap is not, you cannot apply burlap and it will be like, uh, the surface will be very soft. So it's going to be like, so I said to myself with this thing, you can, and you cannot iron burlap. So, <laughs> you know, it's going to burn. So I created a tissue paper that you can, you can have the same thing on the surface uh, with burlap. So that's really great. And the surface is, it's clean, it's beautiful, so.
I will show you a couple of things that I did with it, just to give you an idea. Oops, I just fell down. Okay. So when I was saying you could put textile on wood, you could glue on there and it's very, very soft. So this is one I did. And you have uh, like this one on canvas. And the thing that's really fun, you could use whatever tissue you want, paper, tissue paper. So I did this with, um, in the background, I put like a stencil and then I've cut my tissue paper that I glued and I varnished everything. So I did something similar like this one on this piece. And there's flowers here and flowers there. It's really beautiful. And it's it, the thing that's really nice. It's like there's no wrinkle, nothing. Well, it looks it looks like it's part of the wood or part of the canvas. Exactly. Yeah. And even like if you take the tissue paper that's um, transparent, if you want to see the grain of the wood in the background, you could do that too. So I did different things uh, with that, and it's really beautiful if you use the same colors. You could paint the surface before putting the paper. So it's not, you don't have to put it right away if you want to do like different, like a mixed media or whatever you want to create. So this one is on a canvas and I even put some varnish, uh, the glossy one, the top coat. So, and this one, I will show you in a couple of minutes. This one, I did it uh, on wood. So, and it's, if you see, there's no wrinkle, it's so beautiful. So imagine all the creations that people are going to be able to do, uh, putting whatever they want in the background and then painting it. So uh, it's going to be uh, incredible. So this one is another one. And it, it's like, it's perfect. <laughs> That's the great thing about it. So, so what's the I, trick? How, how do you do the I will uh, show process? You that. Oh, good, uh, good. Yes. And these are my paper. I have nine different uh, tissue paper that we uh, chosen to um, for my collection. So we have beautiful, we have animal prints like this. I have like the flowers. I have hummingbirds, uh, butterflies. And this one is a lot of colors in there because we thought of the uh, rainbow for the COVID. Uh, this one is like a uh, male, the burlap. And we have the old paper, like I showed you. This one and beautiful flowers. So these are really nice. So I will show you right now. Let me just take this off. Oh yeah. And I have another one that I have to show you. So for the painters, the one that loved doing a decorative painting. So you could put the, the textile on your canvas and then you could do watercolor. You could do flowers, you could do whatever you want. And just the only thing you have to do once it's glued on there, it's to put the matte varnish to prep the surface. Uh, and then you're, you're allowed to do whatever you want. So it's easy. It's pretty that much- That sounds easy. great. Yes, yeah. it looks easy and great. It is. So I will, I will just get a little bit down my, my camera just to show you. I think you're going to see this. Yeah, that's good. Okay, yep, that's, great. That's perfect. Okay. Good. Perfect. So this is a really small canvas and I already uh, put one coat of the uh, decoupage medium. That's the decoupage medium. So it's already there. You can see it's a bit glossy. That's normal. And if you put like tissue paper or anything that's very thin, you have to put only one coat on there. And don't worry if when you put it on, it looks thick, it's gonna dry perfect, okay? Uh, the only thing you have to know is if you're doing on natural wood and the natural wood is, um, there's nothing on there and you wanna put like a, textile that's very thick, you're better putting two coats of the medium before putting uh, the, the tissue on there or the uh, textile that's thick, okay? Because um, the wood grain is going to take a lot of the first, um, um, you know, the first coat of the medium, it's going to like get in the wood. So it's better if you put two coats, okay? 
Or okay. you, what you could do is paint the surface before if you want to. Okay. Now a couple of them are asking, and I know the answer, uh, where they can purchase the, these papers and these okay. products. Okay. So if you're looking for, for them and you don't know where to buy them, there's a lot of stores that's starting to have them. If there's, if you really want them and you know stores, arts and crafts stores in your area that uh, could uh, um, have them, you could talk about the products and they could get in the stores, the products, because Demco, they distribute everywhere in Canada. If you're not able to have them, the only thing you could do is go on my website, natashacreative.com. And on there, there's a place where you could click on, click on the button and you're going to go in the store to buy them and you could buy them online. So that's the easiest, the easiest way to buy them. Perfect. And we'll put that link uh, after the live, we'll put the link on there too. Okay, so can, perfect. Uh, and I could give you even the, li the direct link if you want to. Yes. Perfect. So the iron, I found a little small iron in Amazon. It's so cute. I really like it. <laughs> and when you're using this kind of iron to iron your tissue or textile, you don't put any steam. Okay. It has to be just hot, no steam. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is take my paper. You could take whatever paper tissue you want. And if you want to, you could even cut the tissue paper. Um, if you have different, you know, I mean, like flowers or creative pieces that you want just to put like a section or another, you could do that too. But here I want to put it all over the canvas. So, because I want it on it. So the thing you have to do is I don't want it on the sides on this one, but normally I put a lot on sides. So you could even put the glue, the uh, decorative and uh, decoupage medium on there. And then what you have to take is paper, parchment paper, okay? Don't use the wax one. So you put, because you don't want to burn your, your tissue paper, okay? Or else it's going to burn. So you need to put this before. And then you iron your piece. That's it. And it goes very fast. So you iron with the hot iron. No steam, like I said. And it takes like a couple of minutes. Do you have to put much pressure on it, Natasha? And a couple no. of people are also asking if it's available in the States. Can they order it and you'll uh, send it to the States, the USA? Uh, it, for, I cannot uh, answer that question, but what I could do is uh, check check out with the Demco. And if uh, there's an answer later on, I could give it to you and then you could put it in the the and answer the people yeah i'm not sure about that and, and the pressure you don't have to put too much pressure oh, on no. with the not iron at all. not at all so you'll see how beautiful it's going to be so if you buy a canvas that's very normally you know when you take big canvases if it's very very big it could go a bit like under like but if you take good canvases that's a little bit ex more expensive they're going to be uh, in better quality to do this because the thing is that the canvas is not tight enough when you don't pay for a good canvas so that the, that's the only problem that you could have if you don't have a, a good canvas is the paper is going to be wrinkling under because of the curve of the canvas that's not very tight okay so that's the only problem that you could find uh, if you don't have a good uh, canvas. So I, it's almost finished. I'm mean, just going to do my side to be sure that it's very, it's fixed all over. Okay. Let me that see. is a, a fast and easy process for sure. It is very, very easy. Okay, here it's not. I didn't do it here enough. So it, it takes about like three to five minutes because this one is, is not too uh, large, too big. But if you were going to paint it or stamp it or anything, it would be a lot longer. So this is 
a beautiful background that you can do in a short amount of time. Exactly. So this is always almost done. Okay. Okay. So this is great. So there's just a little wrinkle here because I didn't go that far. You just go back and then it takes off. There's no more. So here it goes. Okay. So it's done. It's glued. It's glued on there. And if you want to take it off on the side, you can take like a sponge, a sand sponge, and just like do this all over and it takes off very easy. I don't have any at hand because I would have shown you how it's easy to take off. And the other thing that's very important to know, I have a piece here and I wanted to show you, that's an important thing. Okay. I did this piece yesterday. And the only thing that's very important to know is that once you have the piece done, that everything is glued on the, on the wood or canvas, if you want to paint, you need to prep it, okay? And that's with the uh, medium, the, the um, let me see, the, where is it? I'm looking for it. Oh, it's right here, sorry. It's the matte varnish. So you have to use the matte varnish to prep, okay? So what you do is you put one coat all over this, the piece. And why I'm showing it to you because you see how perfect it is right here? When you put the matte varnish to prep it before painting, it's gonna wrinkle a bit. And this is the, the, the only thing that people could like, oh my God, how come, how come it does that? But don't worry and don't work at it too much. So you have to put the, the varnish over. And I really wanted to show you this because it is simple. And when it dries, it dries exactly the same way as when you've put the paper and no wrinkle no nothing it's going to be smooth so just to show you once okay. this is done it's all prep oh, it's not prep and here. you don't use a lot you're just putting a bit on exactly the wrinkles will go out on their own then like it just kind of yeah and if you the look, wrinkles if you look here on the top there's wrinkles here there wasn't any but now there is a little bit that's going to be creating because of the the liquid of the varnish okay don't take your brush and try to take it off just leave it this way the medium is going to dry and the paper is going to be perfect after it dries so that's the only thing that people could like be a little bit panicked <laughs> in front of this and say how come it does that when you put the, the varnish don't worry it's going to be perfect it, it won't do this uh, when it's going to be dry so let it dry it's maybe an hour, an hour and a half to be sure. If it's textile, it's like this one, it's gonna be a little bit more, okay? Because it's textile. And once it's dry, you go and paint and do whatever you want. So it's really easy. And once it's done, you could put your varnish over, the top coat varnish, and that's it. <laughs> so oh, that's amazing. Pretty simple. Good. Uh, I had somebody ask if they want to print their own paper. Yep. Can they do that? So they're printing it from a printer to put on there. How does that work? It works perfectly. Yeah, same thing. The only thing you have to know, it's, it's not a transfer like the one that you take off your hand and do the transfer. It's not the same thing. It's just like gluing paper, gluing a tissue paper, textile on surfaces to prepare and have a beautiful surface to work with and create different things. So yeah. that's the way to use it. Yeah. Oh, you can awesome. even take like old books with old paper and mm -hmm. put it on the background of a piece, like an art piece that you want to do. You could do it the same way. There's a store in Quebec that did uh, even a canvas. You know, the ones that are like 
uh, cream, uh, the canvas that are like in textile already. It's like beige, okay? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's like a natural uh, oh. tissue on yeah. the the canvas, and she created something so beautiful with that. And I, I didn't even try it myself when I tested the products. It, with that kind of a canvas and it was beautiful because oh, the paper amazing. with the background of the color of the, the canvas it was really nice oh amazing and i'm just going to mention because sue uh is from michigan and okay. she's the one she really wants to get the product so okay. uh, i will make sure sue i send her the contact for uh, demco but she also said that you have to come to pin it in june <laughs> <laughs> She said, make sure she brings, has somebody bring the product to pin it in June. So there you oh, go. Yeah, great. <laughs> Where is it going to be? In London, uh, 2021, June. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Well, maybe I'm going to be, well, no, no, bad, no uh, virus. It's going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Well, By not? then we'll be able to, to come together again. So. Yes, for sure. For sure. <laughs> so this is amazing. And uh, for everybody who's enjoyed Natasha, she is also going Going to be part of our uh, Pin It Live virtual event next week, Friday, yeah. um, where we will be live on Facebook like this for five hours. And five hours. That's five hours of creativity. So Natasha has some uh, a lot more to share with you, and she'll be showing a lot of the other products as well. So you'll want to make sure you tune into that. And uh, yeah. And I have to say something that I tried last week. I know that there's a, a lot of people that are creative that are using redesigned products like transfers and they have like decoupage paper and they have uh, different patterns on these uh, tissue. It's very beautiful and you could use these products with it. Ah. So yeah, I tried it and it's so beautiful. And it's easy to do. Very so, versatile. Yeah. 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 It is. yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, this has been incredible. I think I'll just going to mention a little bit more about next week's shows. Um, so next week we have on Thursday, we're still going to do our Thursday live and we have uh, Paula Jones. Uh, she has worked in a lot of different, do you know Paula Jones? Yes, I do. Yeah. From, she used to be uh, with us with the CHA and AFCI, and now she works for Spellbinders. Uh, but she's worked in all different levels of the craft industry over the past 20 years. And she's the sales manager for uh, Spellbinder Paper Arts, uh, which is based out of Arizona. So next week, she's going to come and talk to us, have a conversation about how COVID has changed the crafting market. Uh, and, uh, you know, sure it did. It really has changed the market. I think it did in a good way. Yes. I think so. We're going to yes. see it in a couple of months because I think there's a, something that changed. Okay, where we won't be able to do big events. That's not fun. But it, there's another thing that's going, even here in Quebec, uh, if I go, in, if I go on um, Facebook or even other platforms, uh, in the United States, they do a lot of lives. They do a lot of uh, videos. They have yeah, a lot of yeah. channels on YouTube, all the artists. But here, not in Quebec, not that much. Yeah. And it, if when this started, we saw like something grow here. And all yeah. the artists started to do lives and the stores. And so I said, oh, yeah, good. Because something's going to grow about this. And, but yeah. because they didn't do it before. Well, and they couldn't keep their stores open. So they had to think of a way to mm -hmm. almost start a new business. It's a whole new business out there now. You exactly. know, and I mean, even when things start to get back to that, you can, you know, a lot of the shops that can open their stores and, you know, there's still going to be that apprehensiveness of people shopping or going to ev large events. So I think, uh, you know, the online certainly is here to stay. Uh, you know? Yeah, I think so too. If you're not yeah. online now, it's like, you're not in business almost. <laughs> I, yeah, yep, that's for sure. <laughs> so, so yeah, and we're also going to have a, a video, a short little video about one of the, some of the Spellbinder products. And oh, then, good. of course, next week, Friday, is our Pen at Canada Live virtual event um, with all new products uh, and lots of demonstrations and five hours of crafting. So uh, when we're done here, I'll be just rolling a little bit of a video. So some of you that haven't seen it yet, you can see all that's going on um, and all the different um, uh, 
designers that will be on there presenting in the segments. And we have 15 different segments. Uh, so 15 different artists that'll be coming on. And we have all the details and the schedule is on our Facebook page. It's on our website and it's in our weekly newsletters too. So that's um, great. Yeah. You're, so, you're, you're so good at this, Audrey. And uh, thank you to help everybody continue to create and promoting their things. And this is so great uh, to see that you're so proactive in this industry and you're not stopping. You're like me, <laughs> uh, you know, giving more and more all the time. And that's, I know sometimes it's hard because yeah. we work so much to make the industry run and go around, but people like you and me are so, you know, we really want to work it out for them to be, you know, having jobs because exactly. we know that yeah. the craft industry, we work hard for our money and, but people are like us helping them. It's so important for them. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, when you were saying all your information at the beginning, my journey was a lot, much the same as your journey of what, you know, what I went through too. And I think we just have the love for creativity and watching everybody be creative and making it just grow in Canada, North America, you know, get everybody crafting and creating. You yes, know? exactly. Yeah. And when you're a creator, uh, a creator, and you're, you were in the chair of somebody that was creating, when you do all the other jobs, you know exactly how you work to, like all the artists that I presented in Quebec with Coup de Pinceau and the show, uh, I know how they work uh, their ass off to be <laughs> able to not stop. They don't want to stop creating. They just yeah, want to yeah. do that for a living. Exactly. And yeah. uh, it's not easy. And their passion make them, you know, work harder and harder. So when we have people like you, that gives us the chance to continue and have the chance to promote and do all these things. Uh, it's very, very fun to know that we have the back of different people to help us because in this yeah. industry, uh, I know in us, they, they, there's a lot of, um, community to help themselves between different artists, but in Quebec, it's not that much of a help. They don't help themselves easy. Yeah, I yeah. don't know why they have that mental, uh, how do you say it? Mentality. Uh, mentality. mentality. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But this is something that I try them to show them, to promote them. You know, we'll see. It's maybe going to do something now with the <laughs> videos and lives. And Well, locals. you are a natural at the, the doing the videos and the lives and a natural at English. So I hope you. Well, thank you. <laughs> Start showing us some of the, like I said, I watch a lot of your videos in French, so I can't understand you, but I can certainly see the process. So yeah. uh, I know now you have the confidence to do it in English. As yeah, well. now I do. Yes. Yeah. You gave me a good, I don't know, how do you step down, do? How do you say that? A push. A push, push out the door. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so I'm going to call you every week uh, uh, to practice my English, Audrey. Perfect. That sounds wonderful. That sounds wonderful. I thank you again. <laughs> well, thank you. And I look forward to having you part of our show next week. And maybe in a couple of months, we'll have you on again. And you can show us more of what you, you're doing with the product. So For sure. <laughs> I even have, I'm maybe going to have more products in the, uh, in the fall. Uh, awesome. New things that are going to come. So Perfect. Well, we'll have you back on in September, October when you're ready with your new product. So perfect. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you. Bye. And uh, for everybody who's still watching, bye-bye, gonna... Natasha. Thank you for being on. I'm just going to share with you the, um, uh, the video here for our, uh, here we go. I think I've got it ready for next week's live.
So as you can see, it's going to be quite a jam-packed afternoon uh, for you here next week, Friday. And it's uh, definitely uh, an event you don't want to miss. It's our first and it, uh, it actually lands on the day that would have been our first day at Pinnock Canada here in London. So it's just fitting that we share that with you at this point in time. Um, just want to say, just a reminder again, thank you so much uh, for those watching. And if you see us in the repeat or on YouTube, uh, check out uh, all of our other Audrey Lives. And also, uh, you know, if you make comments and questions, we'll certainly get back to you. So um, uh, just uh, as a... And ending to the show, I just wanted to um, just, I guess, in light of what is happening right now in our world today, and I hope I don't cry because it's, it, I think it's very emotional for all of us. And that's why I kind of left it to the end of the show. Um, I want to share with you uh, some lesson, a lesson study that I'm actually doing with our Sunday school right now. And uh, all a religion aside, uh, for all of us, uh, their, their values that I believe we, we all need right now. Uh, so this was what we're working on. It's fruit of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is uh, something actually I've had in my files uh, that I want to paint myself. And I just thought it was a beautiful piece and a, a beautiful representation of uh, values that we should all be living by. So. Anyway, thank you again for uh, another great show, uh, Audrey Live, and we will see you next week, Thursday. Thank you. Take care and have a great week, everybody.